Hey everybody, this is George from DinosaurGeorge.com answering the questions I get from you people from around the world. Let's get into it. The highlighted item for this particular video is item number 3035. It is a Spinosaurus tooth. This is a cast replica, a molded replica of a Spinosaurus tooth. This one's big. I like it. It's bigger than the palm of my hand. But what's really cool about this is for now through December 22nd, 2014, this thing is on sale for more than half price. The normal price is $10.95, but it's on sale through December 22nd, 2014 for $5.47. You will never find an item like this at that price again, I can tell you. This is really, really cool. It's a, it's a short special. I apologize that we couldn't get this to you earlier, but we just realized we had all these in stock, and so we decided to mark this down. Now, if you watch this video after December 22nd, 2014, you will not find this for the price that I'm talking about now. I'm, I apologize, but the regular price is $10.95. But again, this thing is on sale for $5.47 through uh, December 22nd. So if you're looking for something uh, that's really kind of cool and big, you don't have to spend a lot of money, this will do it for you. All right, let's get into it. Jonas from Mekawayan City, Philippines. I hope I pronounced that correctly. Mech Hawaiian, I think that's how you pronounce it. Jonas, I think that's how I hope it is. If not, I apologize. Hi, Dinosaur George, I have a question. Did Utah Raptors hunt in packs? Jonas, I'm almost certain they do. I have no doubt that they did. Um, the reason why I say that is because uh, groups of, of Utah Raptors have been found together, and that's always an indication that the animals died together. And if you die at the same place at the same time, more than likely, that's because you lived at the same place at the same time, and therefore you are living in a group, and that gives us ideas about group behavior. There's benefits, of course, to living in a pack, and that is that you can uh, bring down much larger prey, which is much, bene much more beneficial than spending a lot of energy chasing something little because the return on your investment of energy is not that good. But if you can kill something really big, you can eat for several days, and that's why these guys probably did that. All right, James from Hong Kong, China. Is Dinosuchus a crocodile or an alligator? James, this is the million dollar question. I've got so many friends in paleontology that have totally different opinions of this. I have a group that says, yes, they're absolutely crocodilian. I have a group that says no, looking at the skulls, they're alligators. And then I have a third group that says they're neither, there's something sort of in between. I don't know, I've got a Dinosuchus skull in my traveling museum and James, it is cool. It's got those, that crocodilian, you know, if you look at a crocodile, uh, about a quarter of the way down the jaw, there's a odd bumped ridge that exists in the upper jaw where the lower tooth fits in. Well, Dinosuchus has that. But when you look at him, and you close his mouth, his teeth don't really extend over the lower jaw like a typical crocodilian does. And he's got a relatively rounded snout. So, boy, I don't know the answer to this. I, I've had so many people argue so many different points, and I can't tell you who's right or wrong. Um, I wish I knew. You know, um, God forbid me, for, forgive me for forgiving this man's name. He is a paleontologist in Florida, a genius when it comes to crocodilians. Gosh, I can see that man as clear as a bell in my mind. I can't believe how disrespectful that I would forget his name. That's terrible. But anyway, um, I've seen him do a number of uh, shows where he talks about bite force and that kind of stuff. I will bet you he would probably know more than anybody. And I hope his name comes to me uh, by the time I finish this video. So anyway, James, it's good talking to you. And that's a good question. And unfortunately, my answer is I don't know. Okay, Solomon from Valdez, North Carolina. Hey, Dinosaur George, it's an honor if you ever get my question to you. Well, Solomon, it's an honor to me that you take time out to write to me. So listen, I appreciate it very much. All right, my question is, is Carcharodontosaurus more of an apex predator or Giganotosaurus? Uh, uh, and do, can you do a comparison of either of these dinosaurs? Well, Solomon, to be an apex predator, that's a loosely used term that generally describes the top predator of a given environment. And Carcharodontosaurus was absolutely the top predator of its environment. Now, it shared its environment with Spinosaurus, but 
Spinosaurus did not, to me, seem to be a kind of dinosaur who would have competed with him, nor is Spinosaurus the kind of dinosaur that is the big game hunter that I think Carcharodontosaurus was. And so, in my opinion, Carcharodontosaurus would have been, because I don't know of any other giant predatory dinosaur living in its environment who was larger and more deadly than Carcharodontosaurus. Larger, I know Spinosaurus is larger, but I mean, he's a totally different kind of dinosaur designed for something completely different. So, um, I think Carcharodontosaurus would have been the apex predator given his environment. Doesn't mean he's the biggest predator of the time on the planet, but that's irrelevant. For an apex predator, that means you're the top predator of your area, not of the world or the continent or anything like that. Same goes with Giganotosaurus. Now, is Maposaurus and Giganotosaurus living together? And if they are, I've read conflicting stories about Maposaurus being bigger than Giganoto. Uh, some people think they're the same dinosaur. Uh, that would be the only caveat I would say when determining if Giganotosaurus is the apex predator. Because from what I remember reading about Maposaurus, he seems to be bigger than Giganotto. And if that's the case, then that would probably bump him to the top. But if I'm wrong about that, if they're either the same size, um, regardless, Giganotosaurus would have been, for his time in his area, certainly one of the top predators. Was he the apex predator? Maybe he was the B-plex Pex predator. I just invented that word. If any of you use B-pex predator, you have to pay me money. I hope you can say it better than I just said it. All right, and then a comparison of the two. Uh, now, I've seen Giganotosaurus skull, never seen a Carcharodontosaurus skull. Uh, so I can't really compare the skulls necessarily, but from the teeth, that I've seen tons of teeth of both, um, they are so similar. I, boy, if they're not the same dinosaur, I think they're pretty close. Now, I don't know about all the detailed features of the rest of the skeleton, whether there's some dramatic difference between them. Maybe there is, I don't know what it would be. But uh, I think they're pretty close to being darn near the same dinosaurs, best I can tell. All right, Joseph from New York City, New York. Hi, Mr. Blessing. Hey, Joseph, always call me DG or George or Dinosaur George, whatever you like, but I appreciate your courtesy, my little friend. I say little, Joseph. You might be a 50-year-old man for all I know, so forget the little part, my friend. <laughs> all right, my question is, do you have anything in your traveling museum that has to do with Spinosaurus? Thanks, and I hope you can answer. Joseph, thank you for taking the time to write to me. Spinosaurus is one of the pieces I absolutely need to add to my exhibit. I have Spinosaurus claw, but it's not that impressive, so I don't put it in the exhibit because it, it kind of gives you the wrong impression. It makes it look like he's tiny. Um, but I am looking at a Spinosaurus skull. I've just never found one that's I don't think is really good. The one that I've seen seems to be missing about three quarters of its teeth. So uh, he's not very impressive. So once I can find a big Spinosaurus skull, then I'm gonna do everything in my power to add it. Uh, I've seen a great Baryonyx I'm getting ready to add. Um, but Spinosaurus is the one guy that I want that has the elongated snout. I really want Spinosaurus in there. So hopefully, Joseph, I will add it, and hopefully one day I will bring that museum up to New York. For those of you that don't know, I own a traveling museum that currently travels throughout Texas. Texas is a big state, so it keeps me busy. But uh, we go into elementary schools and we turn the gymnasium into a museum for a day is basically what we do. It's a big exhibit, it's an enormous exhibit, and it's really cool. All right, finally, David from Grants, New Mexico. Hey, DG, hey, David. I hope you're doing well. Thank you, David, that's very kind of you. Hope you're doing well, too. What is your favorite dinosaur movie? Thanks, and have a wonderful day. David, ah, ha, ha, my favorite movie. Have a wonderful day, too, my friend, before I forget. All right, my favorite movie of all time is always gonna be Valley of the Guanji. Now, obviously, all of the Jurassic Park movies are spectacular, but the one that's burned into my mind that I will never forget as long as I live is Valley of the Guanji. I can remember being a little kid and going into a movie theater in a, in a, in a town called Castor, a city called Casterville, Texas, at a little theater. I sat down, and when that movie came on, and I saw that Allosaurid, I don't know who he was supposed to be, but he looked like an Allosaurus, I've never wanted so desperately to crawl into a screen and see that thing in my life. I can still remember that feeling. I will never forget it as long as I live because I couldn't breathe through half the movie. I don't think I, I, don't think I took a breath through the whole movie. I was so amazed just sitting there with my mouth open just watching this thing and being amazed by it. And Oh, it was so spectacular. 
And I don't think any movie is ever going to replace that feeling I had when I saw Valley of the Guanji. For any of you that have never seen the movie, you should watch it. Understand that it was made years ago using a, a stop motion animation and, and it's not scientifically accurate, but pfft, it's a movie. So I hope you get a chance to watch it. I hope you like it too. All right, you guys, um, a couple of hints to tell you. We are getting so many um, questions, but some of them are really, really, really long. And quite honestly, those don't even get read. I mean, we just can't. And I'll bet you there's brilliant questions in there, but we can't even stop to read them. The, the folks that look through those, uh, they, don't, they delete them immediately because there's thousands of them that are coming in. I mean, like, like, I think we received 80 today. Today is Sunday, uh, I think December the 7th. Uh, I think it's the 7th. And we received 80 questions this afternoon. And so going through those, you, we just can't answer the real long ones. But if you make them kind of short and to the point, uh, we'll try to do our best to answer them. And here's another hint for you. Uh, we always suggest that you send in multiple questions so that you have a better chance of, of being answered. But the biggest mistake is to send it one after the other, after the other, after the other. What you should do is submit it and then wait and submit one an hour later and then submit one a day later. That gives you a much better chance because what happens is I only answer about five questions per video, and after they randomly pick five, uh, they'll sometimes delete the entire page and move on to the next page. And if you've written 10 times, yours might not even been seen on that page. So if you do submit it 10 times, you're welcome to. Just place them in different order. Don't do them one after the other after the other because your chances are not really that good. All right, you guys, that's it for now. Have a great day. Take care of yourself. Take care of the people around you. Be kind to people. My God, it's so much easier to be polite than it is to be rude. I appreciate reading everybody's responses on these things where you guys are courteous to each other. When you disagree, I like how you guys just state your facts and you don't attack the other person for having a different opinion. And as always, I appreciate that. Excuse me. I just hiccuped. I appreciate that you guys take the time to point out errors that I've made or you make corrections or you disagree with me. That's the essence of science, my friends. If we all just agreed, it would be boring as could be. Take care. I'll see you soon.